Yeah, I think first and foremost, yesterday was more of an evaluation day to see how these guys are uh, physically and also mentally. Uh, today, we'll you know we'll have a little bit more uh, as far as competitive drills. I think the thing we have to remember is it's football. So there have been a lot of shorts and t-shirt all-stars that never really touched the field, and we'll have to wait and see until we get the pads on. What were your early impressions of Drake? Uh, early impressions of Drake? Look, I mean, he has a lot to work on. He has a lot to work on, um, but I have no doubt that he'll put the time in. So, you know, I know you guys saw him out. Well, you, you didn't see him out here yesterday, but, you know, he was here all night trying to get, you know, on the same page as everyone else. So, Hey, what's up, friends? Welcome into Tom Curran's Patriots Talk podcast. <clears throat> you heard Gerard Mayo right there at the top talking about his charges at the rookie minicamp. It was Friday and it was again on Saturday. We had access on Saturday. And the most important thing people are going to be curious about is how did Drake May look? Well, in the first practice this century, not overseen by William Stephen Belichick, which is a little jarring when you think about it, certainly the end of an era, and Drake May authoring and ushering in the new era, really nothing remarkable. You know who stole the show? Joe Milton's arm stole the show. That thing is a friggin' bazooka. The most memorable play of the day in a day where the players were wearing shells, just light shoulder pads, jerseys, helmets, had no logos, and shorts. The most impressive play of the day in a non-contact, non-competitive practice was Joe Milton rolling to his left, getting his feet set, and throwing about a 40-yard dart that never got over 15 yards in the air. It just absolute missile. And as much as Drake May's arm might be better than Mac Jones, forget might be, better be better than Mac Jones, it's hard for it to show up with Joe Milton throwing at the same time. Holy God. And he was pretty accurate. How was May? Not as accurate. Um, he's got plenty of arm, certainly. He did look, I, I think he looked a little robotic. Here's what they did. The team split up initially after its initial workout, split up defense on one field, offense on the other. And in some of those drills, it was very clear that the Patriots were spending a lot of time working on footwork, both with May and Milton, which is to be expected. You want to lay a foundation. doesn't matter how experienced – the quarterback is you want to say these are the things we expect with our organization this is the way we want it to look we'll get to some sound from may on that later they spent a lot of time on that but certainly i think and may acknowledges this there is a bit of a alteration to what he is generally used to in what he's doing with the patriots so when i say that i think there were times he looked a little robotic with his dropbacks and his throws he wasn't really letting letting them rip. Fine, it's May. It's the driving range. You just got a new lesson. You want to go out there and try and execute it. He doesn't have to rip it. But I think the process is underway to try and get after fixing up his footwork. How did he look in general? I mean, generally accurate. They're throwing against air to uncovered receivers. Um, there were a few that were behind. There were a few that were too high. Contrasting with watching Tom Brady for 20 years. Brady was always adamant about trying to make sure, for instance, that his bicep was next to his ear, and he had a full-on, over-the-top delivery at all times, always throwing downhill, especially on the shorter ones. Um, May's slot is just a little lower. <clears throat> Doesn't mean you can't do it that way. Phillip Rivers was borderline Hall of Famer, throwing like a weirdo. May is not throwing that low, but there were uh, – there's a difference there, and, and the accuracy isn't there, and the footwork's not there, which is as advertised. But he fills the suit perfectly. His off-field demeanor with the media and with his teammates was outstanding as well. Let's roll through some of that footwork conversation, though. This is a question from our, our buddy Taylor Kyles, and then a follow from me on how hard it'll be to work on the footwork. Greg, I know having the left foot up is a big part, Alex, and built off fans yeah. specific style of footwork. How's the adjustment been so far, knowing it's still? Yeah, that's a good question. Yes, that's uh, very detailed. Um, now it's been good. I think uh, kind of the first day, just feeling it out and just getting more and more reps. You know, that's all, you know, something new takes, just getting more reps at it. Um, I think it's, you know, it's a perch to it. Quick game's a lot quicker and uh, trying to 
he'll get that. And I think under center stance, there's a lot, you know, I'm trying out new, you know, two new stances that I'm getting used to. So just working on it, repping it, and uh, and I'm starting. I felt pretty good out there today, so just gotta keep working. Relative to the footwork conversation that people would have on the work that you're doing on it now, there's a former quarterback, Brian Boyer, who you know, said, "Look, it's one of the easiest things to clear up quickly." Do you see what they're saying with things that you need to work on at this juncture, and, and how do you feel about that process of just cleaning? Oh, 100%. You know, footwork is huge. Um, you know, I think, you know, Brian's, you know, did a long time quarterback in the NFL. So, um, yeah, I think it's, you know, something not easy, but it's, uh, like I said, once you kind of get it and match it up with the routes and uh, just get coached, get coached hard. I think he's doing a great job coaching me hard. You know, I want to be coached hard. And, and once you kind of time it up, you know, like I said, I think it comes easy. You know, it kind of comes with rhythm and kind of match up concepts and footwork. So, that's what, what folks are saying. I mean, you get the lay people out here just say, oh, it's footwork somehow. Oh. Do you see what people are saying in terms of, yeah, I do have to. Those are the no, I mean, you know, not every time. Um, you know, everybody knows what's going on. Just, just trying to, you know, play ball and, and try to win games and learn as much as I can. One thing that we wanted to look at closely was who was working with Drake May primarily, and I think as we watched it, it was it took a village. It was Alex Van Pelt. It was T.C. McCartney. It was Ben McAdoo. All three individuals were working closely with obviously, since they're offensive coaches, the offense. And Gerard Mayo acknowledged that he has been spending and did spend on Saturday a lot of time with the offense because that's an area that he needs to build acumen. Just hasn't done it as much. So he's paying attention and closer to, close attention and oversight to not just the quarterbacks, but he was watching the receiver dr drills as well with assistant uh, Tyler Hughes and old friend Tyquan Underwood running those drills. But back to the responsibility for Drake May and who it falls to, Here's Mayo addressing who's in charge of that. Hey Rod, is there a primary person who'll be like kind of in the year of Drake? <clears throat> Excuse me, and Joe? Is it TC McCartney? Or yeah, no, that's a great question. I would say, you know, across the league, most offensive coordinators, they they interact with the quarterback, the starting quarterback for the most part. You know, we do have a group of coaches that have quarterback backgrounds, but I would say overall it'd be AVP as far as that that lead guy. With Drake, but I mean with, with all with with Drake, with Jacoby and that's right. We don't know who the starter is. So AVP will be in all of those. Go ahead. Another follow-up. No, no, no. All right. Going off that, how would you describe the division of labor with the coaching staff in terms of develop, developing Drake and like his individual development? Yeah. No, that's a great question. You know, there has to be balance there. You don't want uh, Drake hearing too many voices. And once again, that's why I'm saying, you know, AVP will be the lead guy uh, as far as that communication with Drake. Similarly, I had wondered if Ben McAdoo would be the primary voice in the year of Drake May. McAdoo actually has a little bit different role, according to Mayo. Could you describe um, Ben McAdoo's role? What would be his primary? Role? Yeah, you know, Ben is, you know, has tremendous experience. Um, he's coached every position on the offensive side of the ball. So he was one of those catch-all players just in case as we started to build out the coaching staff. Uh, he, has a, he has a great history, great background. He also helps me with some of the, you know, the scheduling stuff, almost like an assistant head coach type of role there. Um, but I, I do have a small circle of people I lean on uh, as far as that's concerned. So what's interesting here is if you heard it, and I circled back with Mayo after he had the answer, who was the primary person in the year? And he said across the league, most offensive coordinators interact with the starting quarterback for the most part. So he said that that's going to be Van Pelt. And I said, so does that mean that he's the starting quarterback? Because you haven't named a starter yet. And he just alluded to the fact that he'll be working with everyone. So I think in lieu of Jacoby Brissett being here on Saturday, May would be the presumed starter. He's at the top of the depth chart between he and Joe Milton. So he was spending time with Alex Van, excuse me, with uh, Drake May. We'll see where Alex Van Pelt's time gets delegated come um, minicamp, which will be in early June. We'll keep an eye on that too. And also McAdoo and T.C. McCartney and see who's working with whom and how things look. It'll be interesting to me too to watch how much more accurate Jacoby Brissett is than May because that's the differentiator. And again, it, we talked a lot in the pre-draft I think May's arm is fine. I don't think it's phenomenal. I think it's above average. It's not Matt Stafford's. It's not certainly not Joe Milton's. It's miles better than Mac Jones's. 
But if he's not more accurate than Jacoby Brissett, and he doesn't throw it a hell of a lot harder, and he's not locked in with his footwork to the point where he can do it by second nature and just rip the ball, you're probably going to see Jacoby Brissett until all those boxes are checked. That's an aside. We'll circle back on that when we're back next month for minicamp. Meanwhile, what about the other guys, Tom? Was it just Drake May on the field and Joe Milton? No, you're right. We have receivers to watch, and that means Javon Baker, the fourth-round pick, and the second-round pick, Jalen Polk. Polk looks just in command. Again, nothing breathtaking from this group. I remember the first time I watched Bethel Johnson run in 2003. I said, oh, my God, he looks like a machine. He looks like Secretariat. Tremendous machine. But with uh, Polk and Baker, both you know pretty workmanlike. But, again, they, they weren't asked to do a lot. Baker had a couple of drops. Um, against air, which you're not looking for. But, you know, again, it's rookie mini camp. We'll keep saying that until the regular training camp. You're going to hear that from me until they start competitive drills. But we have to talk about what we have to go on, which is a couple drops against air. Meanwhile, I asked Gerard Mayo about the high level of confidence expressed in himself by Javon Baker. John, include question and answer if you could, so everyone has a good frame of reference on what the guy had presented to him. Baker didn't express a high level of self confidence. It's great. I'm sure you want that, but is there a point where you say that's terrific? You know what? Let's have a little less. Yeah, you know, honestly, like for me, I want these guys to have a personality. I want them to feel free to talk about certain things. Look, we'll have rules of what to talk about, but now once he puts it out there, he has to show it every day out here on the football field. If not, he's just a talker, and then you start to lose the respect of the locker room and, and things like that. So, look, he said it, he put it out there, and now you got to show us. Lose respect to the locker room, Gerard. That, that escalated quickly. Holy crap. Then you're out of the league. Working as a bouncer. All right. It, anyway, we'll keep an eye on Javon Baker's performance relative to his self-proclaimed level of play. Um, again, they were going against there. There was seven on seven, um, just token defensive presence on the field. Hard to find anything different or breathtaking. I will say this about the line. Oh, Caden Wallace was your first guy out there, left tackle. Okay, the third round pick was out there, left tackle. Um, I, he, for what it's worth, he and Laden Robinson, very likable individuals. Great presence, great command, fun to talk to, great perspective. So hopefully the guy can play, but first impressions of at the mic, sure did like Caden Wallace. And uh, one of the best catches of the day, though, was by seventh-round pick uh, Jaheim Bell, an over-the-shoulder Willie Mays looking catch, looking back, dropped right in over his shoulder. I believe that was a Drake May throw. I believe it was a Drake May throw. But, um, yeah, we're going to put a fork in it. It was about an hour we were out there, 45 minutes. Noontime, they hit the hill. They hit the hill at the end. Um, we talked to uh, Polk, May, Wallace, Robinson, Marcellus Dial, the rookie corner, and Jaheim Bell. I might be missing someone. I doubt it. Um, but that's the group. We didn't get any Javon Baker or Javon. With Jay Bakes, none of him. But that's that. We're gonna put a fork in it now. It's Saturday, I have to do a little writing now, so we're gonna get after the writing. It's Mother's Day weekend. I want to pick up some flowers and a cupcake to put a candle in it for the wife, and we go and visit Jane too, my ma. Um, but I hope you guys have a nice, restful Mother's Day weekend, and uh, and take care of yourself. All right. Probably gonna to go to the golf course too. Really working on dropping my hands. Drop them. It's almost like a karate chop from the top of the swing. Drop them. Bye.